Hey everybody. So for a while I've been thinking about getting into playing Magic the Gathering. However, in the past, whenever I've looked into how to get started, I've quickly become overwhelmed by the number of different products that they sell, as well as the costs they add up so quickly. However, recently I saw an ad for a free-to-play digital version of the game called Magic the Gathering Arena. So I downloaded that and I started playing and I really liked it. However, I get bored really quickly playing games against people that I can't interact with. And so once again, I started looking at getting into buying physical cards. I was online looking at different options and I found an Amazon exclusive product called the Magic the Gathering Arena Starter Kit. This looked intriguing. It had two fully playable decks. And so for about $20, I was like, all right. And I went ahead and bought it. So I'm going to do a quick unboxing, uh, show you what's inside, and then I'll do a review afterwards. Okay, so here we have the starter set. This has a black and a green deck. And here's all the contents on the back. There's two decks, uh, some deck boxes, and a uh, guidebook. It says it's the best way to learn how to play. I'm not sure about that. I have been playing a little bit of uh, Magic the Gathering Arena, and that's been teaching me pretty well, I would say. Okay, so we've got uh, the deck boxes. The cover art um, is the two sort of leaders or uh, the main cards that are facing out on the box. And here's the uh, the player's guide, and then there's another little insert to uh, plug their Magic the Gathering Arena game again. That gives you the web address to go and download the game. And this just has sort of the basics of how to play the game, uh, what the battlefield looks like, tapping, um, a little bit of info on planeswalkers and then in the glossary it's all the different terms that you'll come across on the cards so you uh, can reference those as you play and let's go ahead and get into opening up these decks so here we've got uh, Kogla the Titan Ape and this is a foil card Unfortunately, it's a little bit bent. Uh, hopefully, I have some sleeves. Maybe once I put them in there, then that'll kind of straighten it out. And then we've got Vito, Thorn of the Dusk Rose, another foil card. I think those are kind of the two sort of leaders for these decks. And let's go ahead and open up the green deck first. So just a disclaimer, I'm not super familiar with most of these cards, and I can't say whether they're good or bad or anything like that. Uh, it looks like we got Colossification, um, Iron Scale Hydra, Tree Shaker Chimera, Yorvo Lord of Garenbrig, and then some commons. I think that's all the rares in the deck. Um, so we've got three Almighty Brushwags, three Bristling Boars. There are two Colossal Dreadmaws, and these are from a different set, it looks like. The M21 symbol there, and the little eye uh, denotes that they're printed in different sets. Uh, there's two Honey Mammoths, two Humble Naturalists, and then this is another set, so there's three, at least three different sets. These are the Hyrax Tower Scout, there's three of those. There are three Lanoir Visionaries. Two Instance uh, Plummet. And then these Ram Throughs, there's three of those, they're also Instance. We've got two Snare Spinners. Then there's four Titanic Growths, and that's another Instant as well. And then there are 26 forest lands and that makes up a 60 card deck 
Um, this last card is just a uh, sort of tip guide on attacking and blocking as well as the turn order. And let's go ahead and open up the black deck now. Let's get this stuff out of the way. Okay, so starting with Vito, Thorn of the Dusk Rose. And if I can ever get this pack open, we'll see the rest of the cards in this deck. This first one on the top, again for Magic the Gathering Arena, that comes with a code you can unlock both of these decks digitally in the game. I've already redeemed it, so you guys won't be able to. Another tip card. And now we've got Demon of Loathing. Demonic Embrace. Peer into the Abyss. Und Underworld Sentinel. And that looks like all the rare cards for this deck. And for commons, we've got two Blood gluttons, uh, three fatigued imps, or fetid, I'm not sure how you pronounce that, two finishing blows, three gloom pangolins, two gormans, uh, three grasp of darkness, three lost legions, two serrated scorpions, Two Skeleton Archers, looks like three Unlikely Aid, and four Walking Corpses, and then everything else I think is just Swamp Lands. There are a couple different uh, varieties of art, and again there are 26 Swamps, so 26 of each basic land in each deck. Okay, so time for the review. It's been about a week, maybe a week and a half since I got the game, and I've played with a couple different friends, and honestly, we've really enjoyed it. However, as a learning tool and as a way to get into the game, I don't necessarily recommend it. Even though it comes with certainly enough cards to play a whole game, and I would say enough different types of cards to kind of learn how some of the different mechanics work, I've definitely learned a lot more from just playing it online, and that's free. So if you're brand new and want to learn how to play, I would recommend probably just playing Magic the Gathering Arena, and that'll give you a good base for understanding the game and deciding whether you like it or not. If you like it enough that you want to invest some more money into buying cards, then at that point you can buy random boosters, you can buy bundles, there's all sorts of other things that you can do to get into it. One of the first major hurdles is to make sure that you have enough lands to be able to play the game. For that, I might recommend buying a deck builder's toolkit, which comes with a hundred lands. It comes with a few random boosters, and it also comes with a bunch of, I think they're semi-randomized. They might not be, they might just put whatever cards in every single pack. You're probably not gonna get a whole lot of value out of the deck builder's toolkit other than the lands, but if you're brand new to the game, that's maybe a good option. Maybe grab one of those and four or five booster packs, get a friend to go in on it with you, if you split the cost, it should be around $20 to $25 each for all of that, and then you can start playing that way. Or if you have a local game store that's open to you, go and see if somebody there wants to introduce you to the game. I know in the past, Wizards of the Coast have sent free starter decks to their game stores, which they would give you if you were new to the game. I don't think that they're doing that anymore, and especially with COVID, a lot of the stores aren't letting people inside necessarily other than to just buy stuff. But depending on the game store, they might have extra lands they can give you or some other way to get you started. And as for this being the best way to learn to play, I don't think so. The booklet that they give you kind of explains the core concepts, but not very thoroughly. So you would probably still need somebody to either walk you through it or go on YouTube and watch some videos there. But overall, is it worth 20 bucks? If you just want something that you can just sit down and have a quick game with a friend, then sure, this maybe is. One thing that me and my buddy did was to split the two decks evenly down the middle, as evenly as possible, and then combine them to make two black-green decks. 
uh, because we found that the green deck was a lot stronger than the black one, as the black one didn't really synergize that well, and the green one just had a lot of big creatures that are hard to overcome if you don't get really lucky with your draws. But that's about it for my review. So, thanks for watching.